The Chicago Bulls have some tough decisions to make this offseason, but one of the bigger questions for the Chicago Bulls this offseason has to be centered around their big man, Nikola Vucevic. And the big question is, are they going to go ahead and stay with Vooch? Or are they going to go ahead and move on from Vooch? Today, we're going to be talking about what Chicago's options are if they're looking to trade him and what it would look like if they keep him on the roster. This is Rico Greenhow. This is another episode of Bulls Digest. And before we jump into it, guys, I want to let you know that 83.7% of you guys that watch the videos are not subscribed to the channel. Make sure that you hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date with your latest news and happenings with your Chicago Bulls. Without further ado, guys, let's jump into the first part of this video, uh, which is Vucevic trade will happen. All right, guys. So this is the latest news and the latest bit of uh, as the, the drama and the saga continues into Chicago Bulls, uh, into the Chicago Bulls offseason, really. And what are we going to do here? And the question is, you know, is Vooch even a tradable piece? And if he's not, what it is going to look like uh, for the Chicago Bulls? And you know, obviously, I mean, to start off, guys, we are in a tough, tough spot here. Um, you know, we're looking to possibly move on from Zach Levine. Uh, it looks like the team is trying to explore uh, all trade possibilities and getting rid of Zach Levine. We obviously have a tough decision to make about uh, DeMar DeRozan and that contract situation. Um, it looks like, you know, we're wanting him to stay, but obviously under the right numbers. Um, and then, you know, we're trying to figure out what are we going to do with a guy like Patrick Williams, a, a guy that, you know, he was our fourth pick overall at one point in time. And, you know, it looks like the Chicago Bulls don't want to give up on him and they want to bring him back. Um, but, you know, it's the question is, is he going to take a step like Kobe White? Is he going to do what Desumu did as well? Uh, you know, you're looking for that huge jump if you're going to bring him back. And, you know, lastly, it's like, what are we going to do with Vooch? And guys, I have literally looked at possible trade destinations for Vooch and there's so many things that are really wrong with what is going on with Vooch that honestly speaking guys I, I think it might be pretty I mean close to impossible to move Vooch at this point in time because his play has diminished so much and his contract is not a bad contract per se but I just think for what you're getting out of Vooch He's basically turning into a backup center. And I mean, we're going to look at the numbers, guys, and you can take a look at this. But I'm just like, Vooch has digressed so much that, quite honestly, it's shocking. Like, when you look at it, it's absolutely shocking. And you're going to be shocked because you're looking at this and you're like, how can it be that bad? The guy had 18 and 10 is what he averaged this year. But I mean, when they say players getting numbers off empty calories, that is exactly what we got with Vooch this year, guys. And so let me go ahead and bring that up here. Um, again, this is what the article is talking about in the sense that we're looking at a cycle of mediocrity, talked about the tough decisions moving into the summer. But let's take a look here at the numbers. All right. So this is Vooch. And you're looking at the last couple seasons, guys. I mean... Yes, the point went up a little bit here, but you can see that he's obviously declined from his first year with us from the 21 points down to 18 points, which that right there is a bit of a head scratcher. And that right there also makes you question what our VP of operations saw to go ahead and offer him the three-year deal because many people feel like we just pretty much bid against ourselves here when we signed him. But Really, when I look at this, the one thing that is really extremely disturbing for me is that he dropped from nine rebounds on the defensive end down to seven rebounds a game. That is pretty huge for me because when you're talking about defensive rebounding, right, defensive rebounding is super critical. Think back to the days when we were in our heydays and we had a guy named Dennis Rodman. That was his like forte dude was hitting the boards and 
allowing our team to take away opportunities from the other team. And he also maximized us on the boards on the offensive end because he made sure that our offensive uh, guys like Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen got second chance opportunities in which they were a lot better. Your percentages go up in scoring in the NBA when you're able to hit the boards. And this guy was not able to bring the physicality uh, on that end. You know, looking at the playing situation, the Miami Heat didn't even have their best players and one of their best rebounders, and we got crushed on the boards, guys. And so that was really alarming for me. And then another thing that's alarming for me is that you look at the free throw attempted numbers. Guys, he's barely going to the line one time a game. All right, that right there screams of a player at that height that is not going inside enough. All right, and I'm going to throw some percentages out here for you. Guys, we were a better defensive unit with him off the floor, okay? We went from being fifth in the league last season down to 28th. Vooch is probably, I believe he's at the bottom of the league for most wide open looks okay so meaning that he got the most some of the most wide open looks and he missed them there 29 percent from three-point land guys that is a serious low when you look at how much it has dipped and i mean you look at how much it dipped from the time that he got to us down to this time it went from almost 40 percent down to 29 percent that is pretty atrocious guys and you know like I said before, he is basically getting empty calories at this point with the 18 and 10. I mean, I do like the fact that he is available during games. I mean, that is one thing that I can say has been outstanding about Booch. But, I mean, he just doesn't rebound enough. He doesn't get physical enough for us, guys. And I'm just looking at teams that were at the bottom of the league, like the Wizards, uh, the Hornets, the Thunder, Miami Pacers. I don't think that there's anybody there that would want Vooch um, as far as a trade piece. And I'm not sure that they have anything that we would want from a trade piece here. And the one place or the three places where it makes sense for Vooch to move would be, I'd say the 76ers, the Clippers, Memphis, and I'm like, I don't even think that they would necessarily want Vooch at this point in time. I think that, you know, for what he would be with the Clippers, he's going to be a backup center. For the 76ers, he's probably going to get time, but it's going to be as Joel Embiid is absent. And for Memphis, I mean, it makes sense. But in this deal, and I think in either of those deals, we're going to have to attach players to go with them guys and you know I thought about this and you know the one team that might maybe roll the dice with him might be Golden State uh, if Golden State were to do so you know we would be looking at getting a guy like Wiggins back and I mean I I don't know about a deal like that I'm only throwing them out there because perhaps they're looking to get some height uh, they did take a chance with Chris Paul and getting him over there, an older player, Vooch is getting up there as well. But I, I just, that's the only team that I could say could probably, maybe it logically maybe fits. You know, they're wanting to get off the Wiggins contract and give him to us. But once again, if we were to take a guy like Wiggins, guys, we are getting a, a very inconsistent player. When I throw up Wiggins numbers here, Look at his decline, all right? So I don't even think we would want to go here. From his time in Golden State, he's dropped down from 18 points down to 13 points. Um, you know, the shooting percentage has dipped a bit there for him. He had a rough year from, from the three-point land as well. The one thing I can say about Wiggins is he is a wing that will defend. But Wiggins is the type of guy that will go for 25, you know, 10 and 5. And then the next game, he might go for 8 five two you know five fouls five turnovers like again man his game is so up and down I don't think that this is something that we would want to explore and I'm going to say this guys I think if we're to move on from Vooch we're probably going to have to attach assets with that and what does that look like well, that means that we're going to have to give up a guy like Lonzo, all right? And I know that Lonzo, yes, he's a young point guard, but if he's showing that he's able to play, 
uh, well, and we're able to say, hey, we want to move on with our backcourt and we want to go get another piece aside from Zoe, like, I mean, he's probably going to have to co- go. I've, I've heard Alex Caruso would have to be attached uh, for Vooch to go. And also, too, another piece that would probably have to go would be Patrick Williams in, in kind of a sign and trade deal. So, you know, I'm not sure if we as Bulls fans want to go out there and move on from Vooch and give up one of our young pieces. I think it probably makes a lot more sense for us that we might want to sit on Vooch probably until I'm going to say the trade deadline. Uh, with that, you know, the trade deadline means that he's only got, I think, something like a year and a half or something like that left on the contract or whatever that he signed with us. Uh, and I think maybe teams might be willing to jump on that, uh, you know, for the playoff ride. But at this point in time, I just think that we would be in desperation mode, really, if we're trying to unload Vooch. And I've even looked at the Knicks and shout out to the Knicks Digest, man. We we, we talked about this and I'm like, I don't even see that now possibly happening. Even with the injury concern with Mitchell Robinson, I don't know if the Knicks would even want Vooch to come off the bench. And that's saying a lot. And that's even if we're attaching like a Zoe or somebody like that. I don't know if the Knicks would want to do that. Um, But keep in mind, guys, I mean, there's a lot of GMs out there that will make some deals that will, well, I guess they're going to make you scratch your head. So anyway, guys, I think that it's not possible to move on from Vooch. I think it's going to be best that we wait for Vooch and we wait around the trade deadline for him. Zach Levine, I think, is going to be something that can be moved in the summer. But let me know in the comments what you guys think. Would you want to move on from Vooch for a guy like Wiggins, do you think that that is something that you would like to see? Would you like to hold on to Vooch until uh, the trade deadline to, to make something happen there? Do you feel like it's a better deal there? And I will lastly say this, guys. I think that also, along with waiting to trade Vooch, I think that we're better served by going ahead and drafting a big this year uh, with our draft pick. All right. So I think that E. Kligan, uh, Filiposki, uh, I think that that's his name from Duke. I think that those are our better options to go ahead and draft a big, and then we can slowly phase um, Vooch out, you know what I mean, and find a trade partner for him, guys. I think that that's probably the best solution. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. This is Rico Greenhow. This is Bulls Digest. And as usual, guys, go Bulls. I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.